Hey, welcome in everybody to the newest edition of Jetpacks to the Bank as our Philly beat the test control was yet again to go six their tweet. So you know was uh, Andrew. I'm doing well, thank you. Very, very good series there for the Phillies, obviously. Um hopefully the Flyers can turn it around because they look terrible. But uh no, I think uh, like you mentioned, Nationals try to troll us. And we responded well, so that makes me in a good mood. Yeah, again, they know what karma is. I don't have to finish that. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, they've been playing well. The Phillies, of course, Kutch in game one of the series showed off his hot hitting and got three RBIs. Reese Hoskins continues to do his thing. He got two hits in that game with a walk after, of course, hitting a clutch homer in today's game. Uh, so, And Bruce has looked good other than in today's game since coming back, which is nice. So, um, for this series, who are the guys that really have impressed you uh, at the um, plate in this series so far? Well, I mean, not I, since, gen- at, since it's a sweep in general, and who do you think will continue to impress and kill the biscuit-hating <laughs> Mets? <laughs> I think uh, you got to give a shout-out to my, my favorite player on the team and a guy that's been ripped on all, all year, uh, Reese Hoskins. I mean, his turnaround has been incredible. What he's been able to do here, especially in the this series, has just been phenomenal. I mean, he's really turned around the season for himself and helped carry this team while Bryce and JT continue to struggle. Um, in his last seven games, he's got five home runs, 10 RBIs, 11 hits, four walks, and a 393 average along with a 485 on base percentage and a 1.071 uh, slugging percentage. In his last 15 games, he's batting 327. So I got to give a lot of credit to Reese Hoskins and also Andrew McCutcheon for what they've been able to do to keep staying at the top of the lineup. Yeah. A guy yesterday that came up huge for us, and by huge, I mean very huge because he had two of our three RBIs, uh, was Neil Walker, who filled in for Reese Hoskins. So he's been struggling. As Kruk kind of said in the telecast, normally when you have one of those games, that's kind of what can get you going, especially from a pinch hitting perspective, because you got the confidence back and feel of your swing. Do you think that's going to do wonders for him as they kind of hinted at on the telecast? Yeah, I think I think uh, that was a good job by Girardi there. He had faith in the utility guy there, New Walker. Uh, New Hoskins' numbers against Scherzer, thought it was a good chance to give him a day rest, and Walker paid off. Um, I think this has a lot of credit to go. I mean, obviously, Drew already does his stuff, and obviously, he's clearly made an impact on the team. But I think I give a shout out to Joe Dillon. I mean, what he's been able to do, he's stuck with Hoskins, he's stuck with McCutcheon, and now obviously it's one game. But for Neil Walker to go, whatever he was, three hits, I think it was off Scherzer. I mean, that's just an incredible stance there. And I expect, I'm not expect, but I think uh, it's a good spot for Walker there to turn it around. And I mean, if you get that piece off the bench there, it's going to be huge down the stretch here uh, as you try to trace, excuse me, try to chase the Braves. Yeah, especially because you got Goose, who you like from the right side as a pinch hitter. So then you'd have Walker, who's better at hitting left-handed significantly uh, as a pinch hitter also. So that works out really well. But in the first game, now that we swing it over to pitching, Aaron Nola dominated. Eight innings pitched to give him a 4-2 and two record, which arguably could be better than that. Uh, and then two hits, uh, three baseballs, and then Nearest came in. And pitched a good outing in that first game, having well, he gave up two hits, but he got out of it and gave up and uh, pitched one inning, and we did okay there. So, what do you think of Nola? He's obviously continuing to look like a stud this year and like a potential Cy Young candidate if Max Fried and Hugh Darvis didn't exist. <laughs> no, he's been incredible. I think. Um... This is everything you wanted him to be. Obviously, we had a questionable year last year, but he's shown no signs of that this year. Uh, two, four, five ERA through seven starts, four, two, like you said. I think he's been incredible. And honestly, I think it, it goes to show, again, uh, what what difference in coaching I think helps too. You go from Chris Young to uh, the current situation now, and it, it clearly has an impact. I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull another guy here. I know you're about to bring him up in a little bit. But, I mean, even just take the guy that's probably ahead of Nola, honestly, in the Cy Young, which is Zach Wheeler, after his dominant performance, too. I think uh, Zach Wheeler would honestly have a slight edge over Nola right now. And look at the difference he he, he clue. I mean, I know he has a good second half with the Mets, but his difference from start to finish right now, I think, and overall, he's been able to keep his velocity. I think he's looked a lot better with us than he has ever with the Mets. Uh, and I think um, I think it goes to show what, what tremendous job uh, this coaching staff has done 
uh, to help help these guys get back back to normal. Obviously, we we all know the bullpen struggles, but now you got Nares uh, going five straight outings without a, allowing a run, and it looks like he's starting to turn a corner a little bit. So it's it's exciting time for Phillies baseball and Phillies fans right now because they they clearly look like they have finally turned that corner that we all waited. Yeah, and then other than a little bit scaring us, I would say he looked his best. In that three nothing win, now he still needs to figure it out and tighten up his curveball. But <laughs> Workman <laughs> looked his best in that three nothing win, so hopefully he can build on that and just tighten up that slider and curveball a notch more, and yeah. then we'll be in business. Because he looked better in that performance. It's just he still had some that they missed because they were not guessing off speed. I think that were kind of right over the plate, but. He got away with it, so that's all that matters. Uh, I think hopefully he can continue to build on that and get better. But you're right, Zach Wheeler, I would agree with you. He's probably ranked ahead of Nola right now in the Cy Young. He's got a 220 plus. He's 4-0. and mm-hmm. I mean, I know they don't look at the wins, but I'm pretty sure if you don't lose on the entire season, they might look at your win total. Well, so, Well, the other thing I want to bring up is, is the guy that got the win in the first game of the series and his first ever career win – I thought Spencer Howard looked really good, too. I think he's – obviously, he showed small signs of struggling and nerves and win his first couple outings. I know his ERA doesn't look too good at a 5.4 through his first couple starts. But I thought he I thought uh, he looked better on uh, – was it Monday? Yeah, it was Monday evening, uh, Monday night. And honestly, he, he goes five, gives up two uh, with four strikeouts and two walks. So, yeah, he had some command issues at times. But I thought overall he looked fairly well, and that was probably arguably his best start – since being called up, and he, he earned that first career win there, even though the bullpen again tried to blow it on uh, Monday. But overall, Phillies built a big enough lead, so they were able to hold on. Yeah, that was Workman, and then he answered back a couple of days later. So, uh, was, Yeah, Hember, Hember yeah. gave up two, and then uh, Workman gave up two. Yeah. Romero pitched like an absolute tank again in that game, though, so, you know, still got him going for And he pitched great today, too, so still yeah. got him going for us. But, yeah, I agree. Spencer Howard pitched amazing. I was going to uh, wrap our, us up with that just to try to give him good luck going into his next start, you know, end with that. But we're okay. We're, uh, <laughs> we're end with the fact that Zach Eflin is still pitching uh, pretty well. He gave a four and six innings. Granted, um, that one inning, I don't think we should have pitched to Juan Soto, but it happened. <laughs> so... Um, he gave up four earned runs in six innings, still pitch a good game. He's one of those guys that usually gives up three or four runs but keeps you in the game just like he did tonight. So I'm pretty sure you got pretty much what you wanted out of Zach F, especially because we shouldn't have pitched to Juan Soto. So <laughs> realistically, yeah. I don't blame him for that at all. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think uh, overall you probably don't want to. I think it's early, early enough where he thought he could take a chance there. But, yeah, I agree. You walk Soto, Eflin could probably find his way out of that. So a questionable decision there. But overall, I mean, I think Girardi's done it better. Now he's got a feel of the team, and I think he knows the direction he wants to go with this. So uh, I'm honestly really excited. You know how down I've been at times on this team. But I, I I really think this team is starting to turn the corner. You're seeing it in Eric's. You're seeing it in Tommy Hunter. Seems like he's kind of made a, a turn for the best as well. I, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I don't trust Hembray, Workman, or uh, Hale. I really question question them every time they come in. But Jojo Ramirez looked fantastic. I know it's all different once you get postseason time with how young these some of these guys are in Romero or not young, but the the less experienced in, in Romero and and some of these other guys. But I, I think uh it, it look it really looks like they've turned it for the best and I, I gotta give a lot of credit to the whole team. Because especially when your two best players have been in a slump but the everyone's rose up and picked them up and that's what you got. And Neil Walker said um I don't even know if you saw this. Neil Walker said this is the deepest team he's been on, and he's been on some pretty good lineups. So I think that was a good, yeah, uh, Yankees, so. good, good compliment to this uh, Philly squad. Yeah, he was on the Yankees a couple of years ago, so that's a pretty decent team. Yeah, he was on the 2018 Yankees, which I think maybe led the league in runs or whatever. And he was on that, those good Pirate teams as well with uh, yeah, McCutcheon, Marte, Polanco, and all them. So I think uh, that was very cool to see him say. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, Walker's a team player. That's why you always like to have him around, too. So that's why it's great to see him uh, get those hits, too, because he's one of those locker room uh, always there for everybody on his team type guys you want to have. Uh, basically, a uh, better version of Kevin Millar. Uh, Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but you have um, 
in that game or in today's game, excuse me, you have Nears come in and then you have a uh, good old Twitch come in and uh, <laughs> do a, uh, have a, you have a scare, almost give you a stroke inning, but it worked. And uh, he got out of it. And I think like JT said, they were working around some guys to get the better kind of like he hinted at in the post game to kind of get the better matchups against Brock Holt because it seemed like he was going more after Brock Holt. And then Kurt Suzuki was just like, hey, you know what? You're Kurt Suzuki. You kill the Phillies sometimes. Let me just not deal with this and get Brock Holt out. Um, where that worked <laughs> out fine. Uh, so more power to him. But he's now 3-0 and on the season. What do you think? I mean, that has to be the surprise reliever for us so far, does it not? No, I, I agree. But there's, I mean, there's a couple, honestly, I think you can choose from. I think between Romero and Parker, I think they're both surprised. And the fact that both of them are, are both still at zero knock on wood um I, I think that goes to show how well they, they how well they've uh, been doing this year and it makes you question why they didn't have more faith in jojo uh before they called him up and how like a guy like austin davis and cole urban uh, originally made the team and then obviously i'm excited to get ranger Suarez back as well I so can, Rays, i Morgan. can give you that answer the Ra- you want to know the difference the phillies and the rays they look at your movement and your pitches and go Oh, your ERA sucked last year, but that's because we told you to do stuff you're not comfortable doing to try to make you better. <laughs> uh, and then they call them up and they do great. Like that one guy that's one of the best relievers in baseball. I can't remember his name. It's like Chris something. That's for the he has like a .97 whip, and no one's ever heard of him before this year. Uh, so that's kind of the same with Romero. Uh, the Phillies finally went, okay, we're going to bring guys up with stuff, even because we realized the reason they were off last year is we tried to make them into – work on things that they weren't as money with. So obviously they're not going to have the prettiest stats, but it's good for them to finally realize how to bring up relief pitchers. I hope. <laughs> so. uh, that's funny. But yeah, Jojo Ramirez is a guy, like I said, he won the um, minor league pitcher of the year in 2017. We looked back at now. Um, I thought it was 18, but apparently it was 17, but either way he did good. And He's a guy that I think he's only our age, so if he can develop himself well, he'll be here for a long haul. And then you have Ranger Suarez as another young lefty that finally came back, so that's good to see. So I think you're pretty good on the lefties, and then hopefully eventually uh, Jose Alvarez uh, will come back. Uh, I think I heard he's out for the season. Is he out for the season? Okay, well then hopefully Adam Morgan can figure out how to pitch when he comes back. He's Uh, looking a little better. Yeah. Not his normal self, but he's a little better. Yeah. I'm hoping the layoff just kind of has him come back, having the snap on his pitches and feeling fully confident. But in this sweep for me, I would say it was great to see, again, the offense continue to keep doing their thing. But anybody was kind of picking it up that day. Diddy obviously had a couple hits today. And um, realistically, you had guys like, Hoskins come up with key hits, but today wasn't even the game. Both teams had 10 hits. They just scored. They were opportunistic, I guess, I guess is the way to put it today, other than with the bases loaded. Well, I don't know how Bryce Harper missed that pitch, but it's okay. It's Bryce Harper. We'll let him go. <laughs> uh, but other than those, they like normally, like if you look back, the Phillies have been pretty opportunistic because seven hits, three runs is not is pretty good for seven hits. Um the six nothing game is when, and we only had eight hits, and we won six nothing. So like yeah. they're they're playing pretty opportunistic, getting walks and then hitting one out, or getting walks and then hitting one in the gap like tonight. Uh, so the all those things do work out well in the end. But I figure for a closing point for me, mine is just Wheeler continues to dominate. Noah continues to dominate. Kutch is back, mm-hmm. Reese is back, and then eventually Harper and Real Muto are gonna <laughs> come back. I could be averaging about ten runs. Yeah, so the uh, the team's looking good. They're third still in the league in runs, which having six today helped bring that number back up after having a three nothing shutout yesterday. So they're still looking good in the overall run total. So my last thing is just keep the rolling going. They won nine out of the last 10 that Harper called for. We have the new Jimmy Rollins in town, the Notre Dame. So keep calling for things, Harper. It'll happen. I guess you guess you're the new J roll. 
<laughs> uh, let's hope so. I mean, JT said after the game, he's like, well, if he's going to be doing that, tell us to win 10 and 10. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, tell, tell him to win the rest of the season. Just don't lose. <laughs> Stop losing. Just sweep everybody now. <laughs> um, but do you have any closing points as we're at about the 15 minute mark of this Philly sweep over those trolling nationals that got Karma slapped in their face? I guess it is a little hard to beat the Phillies now, isn't it? Nationals. I mean, six and zero, six and zero against or zero and six against the Phillies now. But a uh, big series against the Mets. Can't lay off. Obviously, again, you're still chasing the Braves. Got to attack early on and um, get get to this weekend strong. And uh, hopefully, we can make the best of it. But again, if you like our post game recaps of all sports, please like and subscribe our channel and uh, help us get better. Comment, let, or give us comments. Let us know what you want us to talk about. Um, have a great night, everybody. Yeah, have a good night, everybody. Enjoy the baseball. For Andrew, I'm Joe. This is Jetpacks of the Bank. You can find us on Twitter at True underscore Philly Sport, me at JJ Bora 26, and Andrew at AJ underscore Santangelo. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Have a great, safe, and pleasant night. Peace out, everybody.